G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel today for a video discussing this year's best and fairest for every club. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each club in reverse alphabetical order this time to get the Bulldogs out first. And I'm just going to predict who's going to win that team's best and fairest this coming 2024 season. Before I get into the video, if you could do me a favor, I can't help but notice on my trusty YouTube studio app that in the month of January, we've had 30,400 people return to watching a True Footy video after having watched one previously. We've also had 44,000 people discover True Footy for the first time. Both of those numbers are higher than the amount of subscribers I have. So if you are enjoying the content, it would mean a lot to me if you did hit subscribe and help me grow this channel. But without further ado, let's crack into these 18 teams and I'm going to give a short prediction of who I think will win their best and fairest for season 2024. Now I'm gonna start with the Western Bulldogs because I usually start in alphabetical order. We're gonna start with the Doggies this time and I am going to probably start this off with a really boring one and say Bontempelli. I've been pretty vocal this off season saying I think Bontempelli is the best player in the competition. So I can't really sit here with a straight face and tell you anyone else is going to win it. We're obviously assuming all these players are gonna be fit and that is a huge factor and variable here. in. West whether a player is going to win a best and fairest. Um, that being said, if I had to throw up a little bit of a dark horse, I did notice Ed Richards came third in their best and fairest last year and is uh, certainly on a steep incline in terms of his output. So if I had to throw out a smoky, I'd say Ed Richards, but I think Bonton Pelly is the safe bet. Next, we've got the West Coast Eagles and Tim Kelly won it last year and I think is probably the most obvious bet. It was a bit of a mess last year with uh, only a handful of players even playing enough games to really be in the mix for it. Liam Duggan came third though and I think I'm actually gonna tip him in his first year of captain to be the West Coast Eagles best and fairest. I think he's probably highlighted for a bit more midfield time. And the thing with Duggan is he does strike me as a player who gets better with a bit of leadership as well. Now that he's got the tag of being captain, I think he could be a little bit like Shannon Hearn and really sort of transform into a slightly different player. So I think Duggan will be our best and fairest in 2024. Let's talk about the Sydney Swans. Again, this one, this one is not tough. And, the, and I don't want to be boring with this prediction, but when you look at last year's best and fairest and Errol Golden, I don't know why I said that came out weird. Errol Golden, um, he won it by an absolute mile over Nick Blake. You know, that is a factor, right? You have to consider how dominant one player is the previous season and trying to look at who's going to come up and close that gap. I think Nick Blakey came second. And Nick Blakey's not a bad shout, but I think Errol Golden is probably on the path to becoming an elite player. He is an elite player already. So I don't think I see anyone closing that gap. Let's talk about St Kilda. Now this one, I'll shake things up a little bit because I'm gonna tip the guy who came fourth last year. And I think this guy has so much room for improvement and he's already a good player, but I think that is Machido Owens. I've been talking him up a lot on this channel as well, but he came fourth behind Jack Sinclair, Rowan Marshall, and Callum Wilkie. Now, all three of those players could easily have another um, season around the same output as the previous year. That being said, I'd like to see Owens come up from the clouds and steal it, particularly if he gets more midfield time. And I think that's his avenue to getting a little bit higher. Let's talk about Richmond now. And uh, their list is interesting. I think it's a little bit top heavy, as we've been talking about, which means that there's probably a handful of strong candidates. And then it probably gets a little bit messy after that. But there's some real candidates here. I'm going to say Tim Taranto again. Uh, when you consider, you know, Dion Prestia also came to mind for this prediction, but he played 18 games last year. And I think he came about ninth or something like that, which suggests to me he's not actually that good at getting best and fairest votes. And I think that's a factor here. There's also Dusty to consider, but he had a good year last year and didn't win it. Uh, then Shea Bolton, I do think is a realistic chance. He'd probably be my second bet. But when you consider Tim Taranto is a pretty consistent in and out sort of player, gets the, the job done, plays a pretty balanced sort of team first game. And I, I just feel like Taranto probably is the safe bet. Let's talk about Port Adelaide. And this one might seem obvious, but this guy didn't win it last year. Zach Butters won it last year, but I'll say their first time captain Connor Rosie uh, elevates his game in a way that will see him win the best and fairest. But again, you could throw, it's a, it's a coin toss between those two players. I think those are clearly the best two players on their list but I'll, I'll mix it up and say Connor Rosie. For North Melbourne, I am banking on this guy getting his body right because I think he is potentially an absolute star waiting to happen, and that's Luke Davis Uniac. And the reason is, like when you look at the stats last year, he had 14 games. He only played 14 games last year out of a possible 23, and he came fourth. But that's, that's sensational going, and I do think he was almost at Brownlow level pace early in the season and polled 13 votes from memory as well. Uh, so to do that from 14 games is outstanding. So he just needs to improve on getting his body right um, or have a bit more luck rather, and I think LDU is a fairly safe bet to win North's best and fairest. Let's talk about the Melbourne Football Club this time. Last year it was Petrarca. 
I think that's probably he's probably going to go back to back. Um, the other contenders were Jack Viney. He came second last year, and Jack Viney's not a bad sort of second guess if I had to say that, just because he's a pretty consistent week in week out player. And with the, the uncertainty around Oliver, etc., I think Petrarca probably is the safe bet. He is, the, in my opinion, probably top three players in the competition and therefore my bet to take out their best and fairest. Now let's talk about Hawthorne. Their last year's winner was Will Day. Now Will Day is under a bit of an injury cloud at the moment with a stress fracture in his foot, uh, which I don't think will rule him out for too long, but it might interrupt his preseason, might miss a couple of rounds, and that might be key. But I think Jai Newcomb is probably a fairly good bet in this case. Um, there's also Sicily. And Sicily missed a little bit of footy last year, but enough to win All-Australian. But Newcomb came second last year. And again, a very consistent in and under player. And if he just plays enough games, I think he will probably be the most logical choice for their best and fairest. For GWS, I'm going to go with a player that came third last year in Tom Green. Now, Tom Green had a pretty enormous... I guess you'd say a breakout season in 2023, uh, but missed a little bit of footy, but still won close to the most disposals. Uh, certainly had the most disposals per game in 2023. He came third behind Stephen Canelio and Toby Green. So if you sort of uh, assume that maybe the older players there don't quite have the same output, Toby Green in particular, 66 goals. Like If he replicates that at 31, I'll be very, very impressed, but it could happen. But Tom Green, I do think, is on that upward trajectory, and I will back him in to take out their best and fairest. Now, we've got the Gold Coast Suns. Last year, Noah Anderson won it over Matthew Rao, who actually got pretty high in their best and fairest, which surprised me a little bit, and Sam Collins. Uh, this year, I'm going to say if Took Miller gets his body right, he probably is the most logical candidate, really consistent player, genuine leader there at the Gold Coast Suns, and I think... I think he probably just has Anderson and Rao covered. Next, we're going to go with Geelong. This one seems like a bit of a cop-out, but I'm going to go with Tom Stewart. He won it last year and in 2021, and a super just consistent player, like five out of the last six All-Australians. And when you consider how far ahead he was last year, I know they had their injuries, uh, but I think he was so far ahead second place. There was other guys like Atkins, Brian Myers, Jeremy Cameron. Jeremy Cameron missed a bit of football, so he could be a dark horse, but... Yeah, if I sit here and say anyone other than Tom Stewart, I would just be trying to conjure someone to make the video more interesting. For Fremantle, I'm going to back in Andrew Brayshaw. I think this guy probably didn't have the year he wanted, but still came second in their best and fairest last year. I think Sarong might have won it off the top of my head. And while I do think Caleb Sarong is probably the better midfielder, I think Brayshaw, his consistency, his competitiveness, and his desire to become an A-grade midfielder, or at least that's the impression I get, I feel like he will be the one. So I'll, I'll mix it up a little bit and say Brayshaw wins it over Sarong. With Essendon, we've got another club here where it tends to be the same guy usually, and uh, last year it wasn't even close between first and second. So Zach Merritt is probably clearly the standout, super consistent, and that's ultimately what it comes down to, that consistency, and also playing a lot of games. Uh, but Zach Merritt is probably the clear choice. If I had to throw out an outside call for Essendon, I want to say Nick Martin could be that player. I think he's highlighted for a little bit of time off a halfback flank. Does he get a little bit more of the ball? Uh, that will be an interesting development because he's a very, very capable player. If he starts getting a little bit more of the ball, uh, you know, up from like, what does he get, like 22 touches a game? If that becomes 25 plus, then he is a smoky for this. But Zach Merritt is probably going to win it. Next, we've got Collingwood, and again, this one might seem obvious, but he didn't win it last year, and that's Nick Dacos. So Josh won it last year. Uh, that being said, Nick Dacos still came equal second, and he missed a handful of games at the end of the year. And, and missing games is crucial with best and fairest votes because there's obviously there's a lot of votes usually per game. So again, if we're just assuming that all players are fit, then Nick Dacos is the clear choice in my opinion. Next, we've got the Carlton Football Club, and... Last year, this guy came ninth in their best and fairest from 18 games. So missed you know, a lot of the preseason and you know, a month of the first half of the year and probably took a little while to get going, but we did see him explode in finals. And I'm talking about Sam Walsh. And I do think this guy might genuinely explode this year into being that Brownlow quality midfielder. And therefore, I think he's the clear choice to win their best and fairest. Now we've got the Brisbane Lions, and again, this one I will throw a different one up there. So last year, Neil and Andrews were the top two players in their best and fairest, but a close third behind them was Hugh McCluggage. And you know, he didn't have a bad year by any stretch, but I do think on output, he probably, you know, that wasn't his best career season. So if he's coming third then, and you've got, in particular, Neil, who's 31, uh, or it will be 31, Andrews sort of at the back end of his career, sure, they're nowhere near really declining, but I think if McCluggage is on an upward trajectory. He's close behind him. I'll back him in, particularly in a contract season, 
to come in and win their best and fairest. And finally, we've got the Adelaide Crows. Uh, thank you for being patient, Adelaide fans. I'm sure you didn't just skip to this part of the video, but Jordan Dawson won it last year. And again, I think he was such a distant winner last year that it's hard to really pick anyone else to win it. Um, when you consider as well, the, the distant second and thirds behind him were Rory Laird and Walker. Now, Rory Laird's probably not that close to the edge. Like I feel like he's still got a bit of a life left in his career. So he could still have a good year, but either way, he was a fair way behind Dawson. And then there's Taylor Walker, who, again, we, we expect the drop-off to come soon, right? Like this must be close to his final year, but he's still playing great football. But like I said, the gap still stood too large. You know, could it be like if we had to pick an absolute wild one, could Josh Rochelle sort of really start to make it as a genuine on baller? Like I know he sort of split his time there in 2023 and probably didn't have an outstanding year. Uh, that being said, he does have the talent. He's damn good. But either way, I think Jordan Dawson is the logical choice here. But there you have it, guys. That is my quick fire predictions for each team's best and fairest. Some of those were quite conservative. Some of those I uh, threw quite of a different name into the mix, but uh, we'll all see. And a lot of this will be dictated by availability because, you know, touch wood, if Jordan Dawson or a Bontempelli, you know, miss a month of footy, then this this will get thrown into chaos a little bit. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts because being fans of a footy club, you will have a, maybe a better idea in, in a lot of cases of which players are likely to bob up and take that award home. But let me know in the comments. I look forward to it. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.